While I'm wrapped up in two blankets and keeping my body warm, scripting and editing my mediocre shorts, I wonder how people in the Middle Ages survived or died during the harshest winter months. How did they keep warm? What did they eat? How did they entertain themselves in a time before modern luxuries like YouTube, Call of Duty, and Netflix? The start of the Little Ice Age between 1300 and about 1770 meant that the long dark winters of the late Middle Ages were colder and more dangerous. With the constant threat of hunger and death from disease, winter was a scary time. Most farmhouses were poorly insulated and full of cold drafts. European houses made of wood, wicker, and clay were often built on earth mounds to keep them warm. A central fire provided heat and cooking facilities, often with ventilation holes in the roof instead of a chimney to prevent too much heat from being lost and exposing the house to the elements. This led to farmers smelling like smoke as soot accumulated, especially in the winter months. Sometimes there was a second floor accessible by ladder and used for storage. Around the fire were tables and beds. There might be an adjacent area for livestock. The Vikings from Scandinavia built long, narrow fire pits in their longhouses. The fire pits lined with stones absorbed the heat from the flames and distributed it throughout the building. Viking longhouses included stalls for livestock in the colder months. Cows, chickens, and pigs were kept not only for food and raw materials, but also as a source of heat. Using animals for extra warmth had downsides. Life indoors was crowded, smelly, and noisy, but they wouldn't freeze if they lay next to a pig. In houses with portable coal basins, safety was an issue and often led to fires due to carelessness. Since you're watching my video, I assume you're smarter than average. If you also like my video and subscribe to my channel, you're simply a genius. Let's dive back into the past with our next segment. Stone buildings are known to be cold and glass windows were only for the elite. In the winters of the 1230s, the London Palace of Westminster was glazed to let in less wind. It didn't solve the cold problem, but prevented icy winds in the building. On the island of Magellan in southern France, cathedral windows were sealed with plaster in the cooler months. Poorer people could only try to cover their wall openings with paper or foliage to prevent drafts. Layering was the best method. Linen underwear would be worn under woolen clothing because of the heat, weight, and scratchiness of the wool. The linen served as a barrier to the skin. It was much easier to wash and dry linen clothing. Outdoor clothing like boots, wool gloves, scarves, and coats were also worn indoors in the coldest months. Between smoke, sweat, and animals, life in winter must have smelled especially intense for people in the Middle Ages. For the rich, a metal hand warmer could be purchased for outdoor use. Priests might use these to prevent numbness in their hands during long sermons in cold churches. The scandalous thought of dropping holy sacraments during communion led to the use of a decorative hand warmer. The foldable perforated metal ball filled with hot coal let heat escape and warm the hands without burns. Bricks and stones were heated, wrapped in cloth, and placed in bed as a medieval hot water bottle. And even farmers used rabbit and lambskins for this. Not as glamorous as ermine, but just as cold resistant. Of course, you would need the Lord's permission to catch game. The luxury laws of 1363 forbade wearing fox, lamb, rabbit, or cat fur, except for wives and daughters of landowners and craftsmen. Not only those in the North suffered from the cold. In some cases, the weather on the European mainland was particularly harsh in winter. 1363-64. Most major rivers and lakes froze from December to March. In Mainz, Germany, the Rhine was frozen for 70 days. Cologne was able to hold a market on the frozen river. For over three months, Fosalas in the Kingdom of Belgium was snow covered. And even in Southern Europe, the Venetian Lagoon, the Atlantic near Bordeaux, and the Romandung froze. Vikings used various types of skis for hunting and transportation. In other European regions, farmers' boots and horse sleds limited long-distance travel in bad weather. In remote, mountainous areas like Lausia, the chances of survival during harsh winters were low. In agricultural communities, work was endless, and there was always something that needed to be done. Much preparation and hard work were needed for survival in the medieval winter. Firewood collection could start as early as spring and continue throughout the summer when it is collected and stored. 
Food harvested in the fall must be preserved to survive the winter. Pickling, smoking, drying, and curing were often used to keep meat and other products fresh for a long time. Dried grains, cereals, and legumes were stored in ceramic or clay containers for later use in stews and soups. Ground grain can also be incorporated into bread and cookies. In the winter months, fresh fruit and berries were hard to come by, so they were preserved in the summer by air drying or pickling. Goats, cows, and chickens provided fresh milk and eggs. Dairy products were essential for the diet. Butter cheese or yogurt can be made from milk. In Scandinavia, a type of sour milk cheese called sky was eaten in large quantities. Whey remains after cheese production and is ideal for pickling. A large barrel can hold up to 30 liters of whey or half a cow. Salted, smoked, and dried lamb, beef, ham, and fish were very durable. Since most people should live near freshwater sources such as wells, streams, or rivers, their collection should not be a problem. In extreme weather conditions, the trapped snow could be melted and used. Of course, no one can bring in the harvest if there is nothing to harvest. It is assumed that famines occurred in Europe every 20 years. The Great Famine of 1315-1317 was particularly bad. In the spring of 1315, heavy rainfall caused a failed harvest, heralding the beginning of suffering. Crop yields fell by up to a third due to persistent rainfall, and animals died from hunger and disease. The disaster led to massive criminal behavior, including infanticide and cannibalism. Europe fully recovered in 1322. The famine affected 30 million people and claimed 1.5 to 3 million deaths. Despite the deadlier Black Death in the 14th century, the Great Famine was the cruelest natural disaster of the late Middle Ages. After all maintenance work and tasks were done, people needed employment to keep from going crazy. Less farming was done in winter and more time was spent in the house. Medieval people enjoyed sledding and ice skating on frozen waters, using horse shin bones or polished pieces of wood as skates. Viking communities believed snowball fights could prepare children for future battles. The 1460 book of Hours of the Duchess of Burgundy shows an illumination of a snowball fight with children and adults, complemented by representations in frescoes and manuscripts. Time in the house was spent spinning wool, telling stories, and playing games. Board games like chess and backgammon were popular, as were dice games. Vikings often played strategy games. The nobility associated sport with food procurement while winter boar hunting was one of the most widely read texts in the High Middle Ages, the Secretum Secretorum. The treatise deals with topics such as ethics, astrology, medicine, and justice. It is stated that in the winter season, mucus predominated and its negative effects were prevented by dietary changes. In the colder months, it is better to eat more as the inner body heat promotes digestion. Useful knowledge for the Christmas season. For people from the warm southern regions of Europe, a harsh medieval winter would have been a big shock. Those in the north were better equipped and more experienced in dealing with ice and snow. Risk of hunger due to dwindling food supplies and increased risk of disease due to lower temperatures and crowded people indoors. Provisions helped keep people warm and full in the medieval winter. But death was always close. I hope you were able to learn something new. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel to learn more about historical and fascinating stories.